Mr. Vita, go for it. Rabbi, that was a smooth place to stick it, though, like, because he gave that time frame for, you know what I'm saying, for midnight, you know, so you could be like, okay, well, when, when Moses left out, you know, they prepared this little feast and stuff, but then midnight came, you know? Correct. I, I, it, it was. You, you it, would it, think it was smooth enough to to, to, to sit it. It was very. It was a very smooth place. To sit Correct. It. it wasn't like the other. It wasn't. The other ones was like, like very bold and like cruddy and crude. Like this seems like somebody had more literary knowledge than the previous. Yes, that is and, correct. But then, his placement of it also exposes him that is my next that's what we're going to look at the next point yeah, please show me because it's so because i'm sitting here i'm driving down the highway like <laughs> okay, i'm driving right i'm like i'm like no nah, it's real smooth it it, it extremely it, it's smooth. easy it's easy I like agree. sunday morning a little bit i agree but then he 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 makes yeah he makes a mistake it reads very smoothly you will not you will not question it but then we would see that where he placed it is smart, but then some details kind of exposes that it's actually not part of it. So this is the ancient narrative. It knows no Passover. The Passover is not there, but the Passover is inserted. So now we'd have to find out how can we prove that? Okay. Hey, hey, Rabbi. Could yes, it could sir. could 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 this be a feast? Because like a normal feast, but the blood on the doors is just added on to it. You get what I'm saying? Um, it's actually the other like way. Like, is this around. a traditional, like a traditional feast, but they add the you know what I'm saying? Because what right would the blood come into? You know, and I can see a traditional feast. You know what I'm saying? Already being there. Like what 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 feast was Lot doing? What feast was Abraham doing? What was he? You know what I'm saying? So Correct. there's a feast out there. And I'm just like, well, where does the blood come in to to, to be able to insert that in? I think the blood was an insertion to a, a, a already set down feast. OK, we'll look, at it. We'll, we'll, we'll look at it. We will look at it. OK, so. Let's look at the Passover. And as Mr. Vito said, where it's placed in the ancient narrative was strategic. It, it seems to flow smoothly, but then we'll want to ask these questions. The setting up of the Passover involves a fascinating and rapid process. Everything must be done very quickly. We all know that. The sequence begins with a long direct oh, move. Oh, okay. <laughs> the sequence begins with a long directive from the deity, Yudhevave, to Moshe and Aaron. And then an important part of this instruction involves speaking to the entire community. And the word that is used there is used there for the first time, but that is not my focus now. My focus here is to understand what the Passover is, and then would ask a very critical question. I'm going to read, and I want you to pay attention to what is being asked that it be kept. Yud Ave spoke to Moshe and to Aaron in the land of Egypt. Critical. We'll get there. Saying, this month shall be to you the head of the month. To you it shall be the first of the month of the year. Speak to the entire community of Israel. Critical point. We'll get to that. Saying, on the 10th of this month, let each one take a lamb for each parental home. First step. A lamb for each our household. But if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his neighbor who is nearest to his house shall take one according to the number of people, each one according to one's ability to eat. Shall you be counted for the lamb? You shall have a perfect lamb 
meal lamp in its first year, you may take it either from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it for inspection. That, that's it right there, Rabbi. That's it. That's it right there. You can't do that. Hold on. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You can't keep it. You, you can't. Like, it's, it's more. I see it. I see. It's terrible. Dang. <laughs> Hold on. And you shall keep it for inspection until the 14th day of this month. And the entire congregation of the community of Israel shall slaughter it in the afternoon. So twilight, that's what it says. Um, it says uh, uh, um, you shall slaughter the Passover animal, which shall take place at dusk or twilight. However, the exact timing is subject to interpretation, since the original Hebrew phrase can be translated as between the two evenings, between the two evenings. So different texts offer varying insights. So the Talmud tells us that this is in the afternoon, you know, um, the Samaritan Pentateuch interpreted as the period between sunset and night. So it's, it, it's based on interpretation, not my focus at all. Verse 7. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel, on the houses in which they will eat it. And on this night, they shall eat the flesh roasted over the fire and on leavened cakes with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. No problem. Um, you shall not eat it rare or boiled in water except roasted over the fire its head with its legs and with its innards and you shall not leave over any of it until morning and whatever is left over whatever is left over of it until morning you shall burn in fire okay let's pause here in verses 10 the Septuagint adds that you shall not break the, the animal's bones in verses 10. Exodus chapter 12, verses 10. If you're reading the Septuagint, you have the phrase that you shall not break the bones of the animals. You don't have it here in the Masoretic text. That's what we're reading. In the Masoretic text, the phrase not to or the instructions not to break the bones is actually found in verses 46 of Exodus 12 as you see on the screen. It must be eaten in one house. You shall not take any of the meat out of the house to the outside, neither shall you break any of its bones. The LLX, LXX, uh, the Septuagint, actually puts this in verses 10. Just so you know. Okay. Verses 11. And, it, and this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is a Passover sacrifice to you, Hevav He. I will pass over you through the land of Egypt, all that good stuff. Not my focus here. Let's go on. Um... Okay, right here. And for seven days you shall eat unleavened cakes. But on the preceding day you shall clear away all leaven from your houses. For whoever eats leaven from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. No, we know the story. Let's go to verse 18. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, in the evening you shall eat unleavened cakes until the 21st day of the month in the evening. For seven days, Leaven shall not be found in your houses, for whoever eats leaven, that soul shall be cut off from the community, both among the strangers, the native born, and the land. You shall not eat any leavening throughout all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened cakes. Beautiful. Let's list what we need to do. We are told that you should take a lamb for each parental home. You shall keep it for inspection until the 14th day of this month. You take it on the 10th day, you wait four days, and then you do the inspection or you kill it. You know? Okay. The entire congregation of the community of Israel shall slaughter the lamb on the 14th day. You have to put the blood on the doorpost 
We are told to eat the flesh, roasted over the fire, and on clean cakes with bitter herbs. We are told that you shall eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. And then seven days you shall eat unleavened cakes. That is what we are told. So this is how you keep the Passover, according to the text. I have a question for you here. You can't do that before midnight, Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask this question, Mr. Vito. Beautiful. <laughs> Moshe summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Draw forth or buy for yourselves sheep for your families and slaughter the Passover sacrifice. This is what Moshe is asking them to do. What is the problem with this instruction? Let me ask, are they able to keep it? No, if they don't have any money. Okay. Do they have the time? If they don't got time to do nothing, Rabbi. Like, nothing but eat it in haste. They can cook, you know what I'm saying? But you can't do a congregate, you know, not before midnight. Like, it, it, I mean, and then these 14 days and this days and that day, you can't do nothing when all of this stuff is like spur of the moment from the narrative. They're trying to leave quickly, in haste. But then they are told to keep the Passover. How do you keep the Passover? You take a lamp for each parental home. You keep it for inspection until the 14th day of the 10th month. So that's four days gone. This is not in haste. They're spending, what, almost 14 more days there. Now you have seven days that you have to eat unleavened cakes. You have to remove all the leaven. I mean, the details that they need to follow does not add up. So the Pharaoh would have had to wait after Moses stormed out mad. And, <laughs> like, that's, that's <laughs> crazy. So the... Passover is placed at a very important place, like Mr. Vito said. It looks like it fits perfectly, but no. So they're yeah. running with the sheep, Rabbi? How, how, <laughs> how did I strike out? How did they get, how did they get sheep, out? Then I got to run four days with the sheep, and then this doesn't make no doesn't follow. How you get eleven out your house and you and you gone? You're not in your house. How do you take it out? So we see the question arises about the practicality of the Israelites leaving Egypt immediately, as we see in the narrative, while also needing additional time, possibly 14 or 21 days, to follow all the Passover prescriptions. So we have to answer this question. Moshe is telling them, keep the Passover. So but, they, they don't even, but they don't even know. This is all brand new. Correct. Beautiful. Like, how could they just tell, how could he just say, keep the Passover? What is the Passover? What are you talking about, man? We on pins and needles here. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. So at first glance, it seems illogical. In terms of storytelling, how could they prepare for Passover under such pressure? How could they pre pre um, prepare for Passover when it's going to take about 14 or 21 days to actually perform the Passover right? But understanding the, nar understanding the narrative's purpose clarifies this. Again, like I said, this is not historical. Okay? <laughs> It can't be because Pharaoh wouldn't have had to chase them down. He could have walked them down. If they wait that long, if they're wandering around and getting sheep and doing all this old mess, Pharaoh didn't have to run down there and no chairs. He could have slow walked them down and killed them all. Yes. 
So the what story. is happening? How can this make sense? Well, the story, that Passover story that we just read, do this, do that, as compiled by its editors, is designed more as a Passover Haggadah. What is that? A narrative specifically meant to be retold during the Passover celebration rather than a historical account of the event. So what does this mean? You are telling people who are sitting somewhere in the Persian era who know how to keep the Passover because they've been keeping it. They know all the details of it. So when you tell somebody, example, keep Thanksgiving, the person you're telling to keep Thanksgiving knows the ritual and knows what is involved. So you're not speaking to people who are actually in the narrative. You're speaking to people who are settled, who have come up with this tradition, who have kept it for a while, and you are telling them, keep the Passover. But what you have done is you have taken the tradition and you've placed it or backdated it into the narrative. You've taken a tradition that would take about 14 to 21 days and you've placed it in the tradition, in the text, where they don't have even the time to keep it. So the story serves nothing more than to commemorate an event. You commemorate in the Passover. So it's not a historical event that when they were leaving, this is what they did. No, we should not look too much for which historical event it could relate to. Do you get the point? You've taken a ritual that has been performed over and over and over again. The people that they read in the text to know the details of it. But you're telling the people that your forefathers kept Passover. And then you've taken that Haggadah, your formulation of it, and then you've placed it into the ancient narrative. But then, when you look at it critically, you notice that it does not really work. The people in the text don't know what you're asking them to keep. So you go into details. But then, it does not fit into their context because they don't have the time to go through all of this. So whereby they put this Passover feast back too far. They pushed it back too far. Now, if they'd have kept it up in current times, the people, like you said, would have known what it was, knew how to do it, blah, 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 blah. But writing it there pushed it back way too far past the time that when they even had the knowledge of what it was. Correct. But then you didn't know if you didn't take away the details. You didn't they did that in the, uh, in the wilderness. They should have did it in the wilderness when, when they settled and then like we commemorate it, not Correct. force feed it Correct. right there. You know, it could have been once we got settled down in the wilderness, probably around the yeah. time, I would have put it around the time of the tabernacle. You know, I would have put them. I would too. I would keep, I'll put it before the, I'll put it after the revelation of Sinai. I won't put it here yeah. in Egypt. Not, not, yeah. After you settled in, after you done, after you get, you get the law. You know what I'm saying? Then y'all about to build a tabernacle. All this stuff, all the feasts, everything will come into play. You know what I'm saying? But he tried to jam this in. It seems like up too, because I can see when you roast it over the fire and do it in haste. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think it was some. Something with that too. I think it's some layers inside of that, if you get what I'm saying. 
because Correct. there could be a point where you can roast it over the fire real quick, you know, just telling you to eat and leave. You know what I'm saying? But they just tried to do, I don't know, he tried to be a real literary. Great, so, but you so, see, it'll be also difficult because you have the, the angel of death coming at that night, you know, and roasting it. Yeah, you you, roasting the full, the full lamp is no joke. It's going to take some time. <laughs> Yeah, especially if the head and all that talk about don't leave nothing. Don't yeah. leave a scrap. <laughs> you, got, you got Pharaoh on your heels. And and I thought that the lamb was like one of their little deities type stuff too. So like you the already Egyptian, yes. The Egyptians, yeah. Like you already asking for it. <laughs> You see. So it's it, what we have here is that it emphasizes the ritual of Passover and the 11 bread, seven as a commemorative two rather than a strict historical documentation. You know, they are commemorating the Passover. They, they're trying to make it into a historical, um, make a historical data, but it's not historical. It's been taken, something that they've been practicing, and then you, you put it, you know, it's like saying that uh, um, before um, Columbus came here, he kept the Passover. Sorry, he kept Thanksgiving. You know, and you've given the details of the turkey and then all of that stuff. And then you backdate it. You, you put it in the place before he even gets to the Americas. This is the same thing that him and his boy. Correct. Him and his Hebrew, so, him and his Hebrew boy was talking, and he was like, "Hey, hey, hey, man, why don't you correct. put the Passover in there?" Yeah, yeah. man, you can make so, it fit. Is the yeah? Is the same thing here that the it's a ritual that a group of people have been keeping for a while. They know it, and then they've taken it, and then they've put it into the ancient text, trying to connect the Exodus with the Passover or the Passover with the Exodus. So, so what's up with the, the blood, Rabbi? Yes, we'll come there. Mr. D. Okay, so is the Passover actually another pagan holiday that they switched up? Correct, yes. It's 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 separate. Um it's not should I say he break? It's it's borrowed from somewhere. Yes. Okay. Is it a starter? Is it sorry? Say again. Easter or Astarte? No, no. Okay. Yes, it predates predates all of that. Yeah. So the the narrative that we have here isn't primarily concerned with historical accuracy regarding the sequence of events leading up to the Israelites' departure from Egypt. That is not what the Passover piece is. The ancient Exodus myth did not know the Passover. Doesn't know about it. That's why we don't see it when we read the text. When it flows, we see an insertion of the Passover, which seems to fit. But then if we look at the details of the Passover, it's it really does not. It really does not. In the ancient version of the story, there was a direct progression from the announcement of the final plague, the death of the firstborns, to the Israelites' immediate exodus. The latter inclusion of, or the later inclusion of Passover rituals, and the commandments about unleavened bread, along with the consecration of the firstborn to Yahweh, represents an editorial choice. These editorial decisions made by numerous contributors over time have woven together various elements. That is the Passover ritual, the significance of unleavened bread, and the consecration of the firstborn into the fabric of the Exodus story. Passover is a different ritual. Unleavened bread is a different ritual. The consecration of the firstborn is a different ritual. 
But what the editors did was they took these and then they stitched them together. And it is our job to separate them and then see where they came from, where they come from, and how we can understand them. Ah, let's see, quite a few more to go, but we don't have the time. But let me show you this document. We have to do part two next week because we haven't finished at all. We have a lot of data to cover. Let me show you how we can read this thing. Um, where is it? 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 Passover, Passover. There we go. I'm going to put something on your screen so we read it. Can you see my screen here? Yes, it's small, but yes. Okay, I'll make it big. So these are the traditions. You have the yellow highlight, which is the priestly Passover places the ancient ritual in the context of the Exodus. We have the blue highlight, which is the holiness code. That's a different redactor or editor. We have the green highlight. So, sorry, the holiness code is coming from the priestly version. So you have different priestly sects, okay? The green highlight is the redactors. They are stitching things together. And then the black highlight is the ancient Exodus myth which the last plague doesn't know the connection with the Passover. So if we read from Exodus chapters 10 all the way to chapters 13, we are able to pull out these three different sources. And that's what we are going to have to go over. Oh. <laughs> have to go over next next oh. week. But these are the sources, and we have to be able to pull them out. See? But we've got quite a few, to, a lot to cover because we haven't finished up at all. We have to look at the calendar. You know, we have to look at what the Passover really means. And then the blood, where are they getting that ritual from? Um, this is got... just an introduction. This is going to be oh, so yes. good. <laughs> 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 Oh, well, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So.